Okay, hi guys. So we have a story today. I figured I'd start the Beltane stories with Rupert's Tales, which we have been following for every holiday, right? And this one is called Rupert's First Beltane. Isn't that cute? Okay, so here we go. Readjust just a little here. Good. Rupert the rabbit sat very quiet, very still, hiding by a tree on the top of a tall hill. He'd never been to this unfamiliar place before, but had heard whispers of its mysterious lore. On the edge of the forest was a thick grove of trees, elms, oaks, birch, and cypress with their long, knobby knees. And in the middle of this shady green place, was a meadow or clearing, a round kind of space. It was here that he'd heard people would come with bells and whistles and sometimes a drum. Together they would dance and sing and play, and then they'd do something they called pray. At least that's what he'd heard from many of his friends all through the brambles and thickets and glens. None of it made any sense or seemed very wise, so he'd made up his mind to go see it with his very own eyes. He'd watched with some amazement the people gathered there, laying logs and fallen branches in a big pile with great care. But why they would do this was hard to understand. Why move things about? cluttering up the land. So see little Rupert, how little he is there? <laughs> the people he was watching were young, old, and in between, with men and women and boys and girls filling up the scene. Most were wearing pretty clothes of many colors and hues. There were some with wreaths of flowers laced in their hair, too. But what were they doing here, he wanted to know. Why did they come, and when would they go? Rupert noticed the sun was beginning to go down and wondered if he should stay still, nosing around. The shadows were stretching, keeping him hidden from view but he wasn't sure he wanted to know what the people were going to do. He could see they'd stop their gathering and piling and running all around, and now they were all bunched together, standing or sitting down. He could see one woman talking like she was telling people what to do, pointing to each direction, north, south, east, and west, too. As he wondered if he should move closer to hear what she was saying, he heard a noise above him, a sudden whoosh and a branch gently swaying. He felt a moment of panic, fear telling him he should run. An owl had come out hunting with the setting of the sun. Don't go any closer or you'll get a really bad surprise. With his heart thumping wildly, he thought this advice was wise. Rupert trembled and held his breath, trying hard not to be afraid. The instinct to run was hard to ignore, screaming at him to be obeyed. You're safe from me this night, friend rabbit, came a cheerful voice from above. I've come to teach a lesson to you about the people and about love. Then he heard another little shaking of the leaves on the tree limb as he watched the owl open her wings to float down to stand behind him. The owl herself was truly lovely to behold, all decked out in the purest white with pretty flecks of gold. But as Rupert watched the last touch of the sun fade away, it seemed to him the owl's bright feathers turned from white to silver and to gray. He could feel his heart slow down, no longer afraid it would quit, and the twitching in his long legs began to relax a little bit.
Watch now, she said, looking at the people with her big round eyes. From this far away, maybe the fire won't be such a terrible surprise. Fire, thought Rupert, finding his ears suddenly pressed tight against his head. These people are bad, don't they know we'll all end up dead? Hush now, said the owl, touching him gently with her smooth silvery wing. This is a time for God and goddess and all the blessings that they bring. If you'll be very quiet and very brave too, you'll have the chance to learn a new thing or maybe even two. Many times throughout the year, people gather here, sometimes with quiet thoughts, sometimes with loud cheer. To us, their ways and thoughts are really very odd, especially the way they sometimes think of goddess and of God. For you and I, the owl explained, there's never any doubt whether God and goddess are inside of us or how they come about. Instincts and the weather, the seasons, moon and sun, these are the guideposts by which all our lives are lived and things are done. <laughs> Little Rupert. But people have a very special place in the hearts and plans of the gods. Though it seems they act like carrots instead of peas stuffed into long green pods. Rupert could feel himself relax as the owl spun out her tail her eyes now as dark as night against her feathers so soft and pale. Suddenly they went from black to gold and her feathers from gray to white as the fire the people had made flared up to make the clearing bright. Stand fast now, be steady, and try real hard not to flee. There are certain things you can learn if you will hold real still and listen close to me. The moon. Tonight, these people have gathered here to celebrate and feast. They worship together from the greatest among them to the very least. There are many reasons they gather for blessings and boons and sometimes even for bane. Tonight they are here in a circle that's sacred to celebrate the Feast of Beltane. <clears throat> Beltane, Rupert asked, what is this feast and what does it mean? And why do people come here to trample the grass that's finally turning so green? Beltane means different things to different people, depending on their ways. Midway between the spring equinox and the summer solstice is when this feast holds sway. Some call this time the festival of flowers, fertility, sensuality, or delight. The true aim of these people here is honoring spring at its fullness and at its height. There was a time when people lived much more like we do now when it was to the seasons and the weather that they had to learn to bow. But times and ways will always change, even for beasts and animals like us. And now with wind and rain, feast and famine, people hardly have to fuss. And so it is that they come here to embrace goddess in her own place, many hoping to catch a glimpse of God as the green man face to face. It is here among the trees and fields that they can feel best the way it used to be, when man and woman worked hand in hand with earth, air, fire, and sea. Oh, there's the maypole. Here they feel the call of the sun and moon in their blood and in their bones, no matter the steel and concrete with which they now build their cities and homes. And it is here, with the breath of the goddess and the god touching their faces, that they can feel much more firmly, each of them, their rightful places. For as you are aware, my friend, the owl said, giving Rupert a knowing glance, not one of us is here merely by accident, nor by chance. It takes a woman and a man to create both girls and boys, with all the troubles that can mean, and also all the joys. Beltane is a very special time of year meant to celebrate passion and love, so that people will remember to take time to make their lives below as it is above. The people you see here dancing around their May Eve fire, they are celebrating their own very human and very sacred desire. From shaking hands to caressing a child's sleeping face, touching each other is a natural thing to do among the human race. Is he holding hands? I think I understand, said Rupert, his long whiskers tickling the white owl's beak. 
Tonight, it's comfort, passion, and love the women and men will seek. True blessing shared in the union of goddess and God, his companion agreed. Of guilt or remorse or fear, there is truly no need. And the children will have their own special games of friendship to play, knowing it will be their own turn to honor the goddess and God on some future day. Nor is this feast held to honor love only between a woman and a man, they all explained. For love is love and should be honored no matter where or how it's found or gained. Then they were silent side by side, the two new friends, watching the people and thinking of beginnings and of ends. Maybe the next time people come here, you'll come again too, Rupert suggested, his heart so full, hoping it was true. But when he turned to look at her, look, who's that? Green man, ah, and May Queen. Standing in the white owl's place was she who has many names and a man who had green leaves for his face. Yay, the green man and the goddess. Rupert gasped, then bowed his head, not knowing what to say. He was stunned to think God and goddess would visit him this way. Thank you for listening, said the lady with a voice all silvery bells, and for keeping this Sabbath with all the people gathered here as well. Keep an eye out for our return, the Lord told Rupert with a happy grin, for you never know when we'll come to see you once again. Yay, Rupert's first encounter with God and Goddess. How exciting. I hope you all have a great Beltane. Blessings.